Alhamdulillah, it's always a blessing to be with the Ahbab and to be with people that you love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all and to preserve us all. And to leave these moments of purity were in which that we were remembering our Lord and remembering our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we leave them in the care of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will never neglect anything that is left in his care, tabarakah wa ta'ala. And ultimately all we have is Allah. And whoever finds Allah, so to speak, has everything. Whoever is enriched by the true enricher, subhanahu wa ta'ala, has everything that they need in this world and in hereafter. And no matter what anyone has, if they don't have Allah, and they don't know Allah, and they don't have the proper belief about the Lord of the heavens and the earth, that in reality they are entirely bankrupt and have nothing. And so what a blessing to have the gift of faith, because faith is a gift. It is a divine gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives it to whom he pleases. And whether we were born with parents who are Muslim or that we entered into this faith, the reality is even blessings that are quote-unquote kesbi that we've so-called earned, in reality everything is wahhabi. In reality everything is a divine gift from our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Were it not to be for our Lord that there would be no existence that you and I wouldn't have anything that is that we have. So these are moments and opportunities where we're supposed to think very deeply about the meaning of life and about the meaning of what it is that you and I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And if we are wise is that we will be people who take heed and learn lessons from what is transpiring around us, from our friends, from people that we see, people that it is that we know, things that are happening in the world, is that we are by nature as believers taught to understand the true nature of this world and to see the Mukawin, the one who brought it into existence when we look out and we see everything that he has created, subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are all reminders for us, the reminders of our mortality, reminders of what is truly important, reminders of us is that where our heart should be and how it is that we should be living. And when we that have this proper frame of thinking and way of looking at things, then we find that our life changes and what we are dedicated to changes and we're able to live a life of benefit and a life where in which is that we are preparing and preferring hereafter over this world taking advantage of every moment that we have and in the end and I was thinking about this as we were reciting Surah Yasin. Surah Yasin, as we all know, is the heart of the Qur'an. And as some of them have said, is that the heart of Surah Yasin is Salamun Qawlim Min Rabbin Rahim. That peace, a word from a merciful Lord. If Yasin is the heart of the Qur'an, the heart of Yasin is that for us all in paradise, when without any inter inter intermediary that our Lord addresses us directly, subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the greatest blessing of all. And one of the blessings of reading the Qur'an is you should start to realize what is truly important. This is what is important. When you and I take our last breath and we enter into the next world, and we're a reminder of everything that's going to happen towards the end of time, that as we transition to the life of the grave, which is one of the is the first stage of the hereafter, and then everything that happens in the grave until the resurrection, and then the day of judgment, and everything that then happens eternally. Unfortunately, that we find ourselves in deep, deep heedlessness. And one of the great blessings of the Qur'an is that it gives us clarity. It gives us a perspective that is a true perspective of ultimate truth coming from the Lord of the heavens and the earth, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what a blessing to have that. And one of the greatest ways is that our perspective gets skewed is by the hawa. When desire seeps into the heart, and such that it develops that we develop attachments then to the various things of the world, to the various desires that we have for the things of this world that starts to pollute our perspective. And we don't see things as they truly are. And then with that skewed perfect perspective is that we start to make bad decisions that are based upon a false sense of reality. And this is why one of the things that we should do whenever we need to make a big decision 
is it do a khatam of the Quran? If we can't do a khatam of the Quran, then read portions of the Quran. If you can't read portions of the Quran, we even recite even some of the shorter surahs of the Quran because from the blessing of Allah to Barakatana, even in these shorter surahs of the Quran is everything that is that we need. That let alone when we read the longer chapters, let alone were we to do an entire khatam. But it gives us a perspective wherein which is that we will our perspective won't be tainted from our hawa and our desires. And then, if the, we have this, then we can put everything in its proper place. And what a blessing to have this. Because when we understand the true nature of this world, is that we will, un we understand then, is that the nature of this world, it is the dar al asa, it is the abode of sorrow. No matter what it is that we experience in this world, of good, there always will be things that are difficult. But this is what the beauty of what Iman does for us, is that it makes the difficult things that we experience actually to be good. It makes the things that we dislike actually to be of benefit to us. And look at the likes of Imam Ghazali, what does he say about the true definition of khair? What is the real definition of good? It's that which benefits in the hereafter. And what is the true definition of shar? It's that which it harms us in the hereafter. So there are a long list of things that outwardly seem to be unimaginable that manifestations of evil, but in reality, they are good. But that is only the believer that has the ability to experience that. And this is why that our Prophet ﷺ, he himself was amazed. Ajaban, the Amr al-Mumin. He was amazed at the affair of the believer. Kulluhu khair. His entire affair is good. Whether we go through that a state of prosperity and ease or whether we go through a state of calamity and tribulation, if we do what it is that we're supposed to do, is that we will be beloved to our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and He will open up the doors for us to find the comfort and strength that we need to be able to process it and get through whatever it needs that we need to get through here in this world. But ultimately, is that what really matters is when we take our last breath. And if anyone, and they say that if you want to ask someone about the true nature of the world, ask someone who's going through the Sakarat al Mot. Ask someone who's going through the throes of death just before they die. And if everyone has seen that, that is the greatest admonition of all to be right next to someone as they get closer and closer and closer to passing. And then to be right there when they take their last breath. And then to see that body that was alive, that had animate life because the ruh, the spirit was in it, but then all of a sudden the ruh is no longer present. And the body is still there, but there's no more life. And where did that life go? Where did the spirit go? Is that we know where it goes as believers. But what an admonition to see that. And then to have to wash a body, and then to shroud that body, and then to pray upon that body, and then to bury them at six feet deep, and to actually lay them on the ground, on the right side, facing the Kaaba, and that moving the shroud away slightly so the right cheek is that on the dirt itself, and then to pour dirt on top of them. La ilaha illallah. And then this is why it's sunnah for us to remind ourselves as we take those three scoops of dirt, minha khalaqnaakum from it, we created wa fiha nu'idukum into it, that we return to minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra, and we are going to bring you forth from it a second time. And la ilaha illallah. That what an admonition. And it's in moments like those is that you have flashbacks of your entire life. How did I live? What have I done with my life? And what are we all doing with our lives? And the hope is, is that we live a life of purpose and we live a life of meaning. And that we live lives sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether we are known or whether we are unknown, whether we are that uh, in a state of that anonymity or whether that we have people that know us. What really matters ultimately are those moments that we have between us and our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala of sincerity, where we bring to heart a state of muraqaba, vigilance, where Allah Taala sees us, and we have come forth from us that deep sincerity that this is all for you, Ya Rabbi. 
This is not for other people. Is that this is ultimately all for you, and this is a gift. If everything that we do can be solely for the sake of Allah, is that we put everything in its proper place from the morning until the evening, and we rid from our hearts the desire to please people, to do things for the sake of people, or to seek people's approval, or to be accepted by them, let alone to be praised by them, is that we do it solely for the sake of Allah, and put everything then in its proper place. And those acts, even if they, they seem to be very small in reality, is that they are great with Allah. There are many acts that outwardly seem to be very insignificant, but from the strength and power and the sincerity of the intentions behind those acts are actually acts that pierce the veils between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're acts that are a cause for things to happen in the unseen as a result of that. And alhamdulillah, we thank Allah, may Allah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather us together time and time again and to keep us together and bless us to continue to love one another and to that always have our tongues be moist the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praising the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and fulfilling our purpose here on earth and doing what it is that we need to do and the remaining days that we have so that that when we transition from this world into the hereafter and our spirit leaves is that what we really want is to be from those whose soul has been that has been transformed from that base state of nafs and amara to that state of spiritual struggle of alawama we are taking ourselves to account what we really want is to have a nafs that is mutmainna. And then when Allah Ta'ala calls that soul back to him, it's very different at that point. He receives that soul in the very best of ways. And that he, with the utmost divine gentleness, prepares for that soul, that, that which no eye has seen, no ear has ever heard, and nor that has even ever crossed the heart of any believer. Ya nafsul mutma'inna. Oh, tranquil soul, irji'ila rabbiki. Return to your Lord, Raldiatin Mardia, that being content and well content, that Fadhuli, 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 enter amongst my servants, what holy jannati, enter paradise, my paradise. May Allah ta'ala bless us to be from those souls, Ya Rahman Rahim, who are given glad tidings of their place in paradise before we exit from this world. Protect us and preserve us and ward off all harm from us, Ya Rahman Rahim. And these are moments for us in closing. Is that with everything that's happening in the world, especially with our Muslim brothers and sisters in Palestine, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them relief and grant them faraj. Is that we are not a true believer if we don't feel the pain of the ummah, wherever they might be on the face of those as these are times for us to wake up and get our acts together and to realize is that any Muslim who is turned away from their deen is in and of themselves a cause of suffering of Muslims locally and nationally and internationally and this is the way that our ulum have always seen this is that it begins with the individual and the more that people turn away from their deen the more humiliated the ummah of our prophet is going to be the only way for us to regain our izzah and our honor as believers is to return to the deen of the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, wa sallam. may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all to make tawbah and to repent and return unto him and may the ummah of our prophet says and be returned unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and return to a way of following the Sunnah in the very best of ways. Ya Rahman Rahman. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 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 Wa sall